Okay, we're going to be looking at doing the bottle uh, today in the style of the Surrealis, and I'm going to start beaming here by looking at the top of the ellipse here, drawing it in, and then what most students fail to do is to make sure there's a line through the centre of the bottle, so the bottle ends up being wonky either side. I mean, I've seen bottles looking like this, for instance, if you beam in, and they haven't put the actual centre line, and everything's kind of offset in the wrong way. So first we'll get the line through the middle pretty much <coughs> to the centre. Then you can start drawing the outline of the bottle here like I've done. Also you can put a 90 degree line across here so you make sure that the bottle on either side the areas are equidistant the same size. Then we go down here Again, making sure, if you look here, that both sides, the shoulder of the bottle, are roughly the same. And you can look at one side and the other, if you beam in there, just to see that they're exactly the same, or roughly the same length across. And I'm using a ruler here just to define the bottle. The bottom of the bottle will have a larger ellipse, as you can see here. And further on they go up we're going to be making the ellipses. Do you think, boys, they get bigger or smaller as they go up? Big, big, smaller. smaller. Smaller, because your, uh, the distance and the perspective, the eye line, will further reduce itself into <laughs> the top end. When it's on your eye level, if you look beam in there, something's on your eye level, you will just see a straight line. So, for instance, if you've got a coin, you hold a coin up, you see a straight line, that means it's exactly on your eye level. So these ellipses here are going to get gradually, gradually smaller until you literally see a line there. And you can see we beam in, the contour lines have been established. So when you draw or paint, you're going to be following those lines here. So they've got to be pretty accurate and the ellipses have got to be exactly in the right position, as you can see there. And then we'll begin to shade, as you know, the contour lines, we follow those circles here. If you look here. Right, William, can you see this? What's, what do you think is the benefit of putting those circular contour lines in first? Uh, it makes it look 3D. Why? Because it's got depth. Because you've used the, the curves yeah. to show where the form goes. Now, when you're shading your bottle, you will follow those curves around. And if, for instance, there's a label on the bottle, you can just go like this, follow the curve there, go straight down, Go straight down here, and then you see the curve there. You follow the curve of the ellipse, and that will give you a label on the bottle. Not that we're going to be putting labels on our bottles, but just in case you do need to do that. So that's the bottle demo sorted out. Now we're going to go on to teapot, if you're going to be looking at drawing a teapot. Again, the same principle applies. You can look at the central point you start from and make sure it's the line's equal distance. So you have a line through the centre there, so we're starting from the top of the pot. If you beam in there, you can see I've done the top part. And just generally do a nice outline, making sure that everything is equal. And then, again, looking at the ellipses, and the bottle here. And then what I'm going to do is ask one of the students, maybe earlier, if you come here, I'd just like you to roughly show me where you think the contour lines are on here. Where would you draw the contour lines? If you could draw them around the bottle. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, we did this before with the burger and the Westerman image. That's pretty much right. You can go around like this, going around like that, and you tell me what does this enable you to do? Get it a bit more 3D. If they were straight, if those lines were straight, what would be the problem? If you just did them straight, straight across like that, if you beam in there? It wouldn't look 3D. No, because you, you're not following the, the contour lines. Now, I'm going up to the 
top of the uh, teapot. teapot here. And again, if some, some students drew, actually draw lines on the, on the thing, on the bottle here. Uh, if you're worried about defining the form, you can draw lines on there. If you go into the bottle, you know that the line will go one way and then the other. So, so what about the logo? The logo we'll leave for now. It's a bit like the label on the, on the uh, bottle. bottle. Now, if you can see the way, if you've got any problems at all, you just draw lines on there, straight lines, and you can see where they actually go. Now, if you beam in there, you can see that the bottle has some depth there, and again across around here, you can see that. Now, what do you think, boys, the benefit of doing these lines before you paint, before you do a painting of a bottle? What do you mean you know what to do, Milo? You know where the brush strokes have got to go, which direction. Now, the only problem when you paint is that the darker areas, you'll need to do darker paint, and the lighter areas, you leave lighter, but you still follow the contour lines around. Okay, any more questions, boys? No, that's the end of the demo. Thanks.